Let's get medieval. And not in the cool knights in armor way. Nah, let's get real gross with it. You know where I'm going with this. The Black Death. The bubonic plague, the global pandemic responsible for millions of deaths back in the 1300s. It seems so far behind us now, right? Just another history lesson to look back upon and say, dang, things are so much better now. But are we equipped for something like that to make a repeat appearance? We'll be discussing that today. Hello fellow friends and philosophers, and welcome back to the most mind-banging channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we'll be discussing the implications of the Black Plague happening again in 2020. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more bacterial throwbacks. Excellent, let's get going. The Black Death goes by a few different names, and is often referenced when discussing disease and pandemics. We should probably go over the history of the plague and why it was so effective at taking out 14th century folks. So back in the 1300s, this deadly disease swept through Asia and Europe. By spreading along trade routes for the better part of the century, it made its way to China, India, Persia, Syria, Egypt, and beyond. One fateful October in 1347, the Black Death arrived in Europe. Twelve ships from the Black Sea docked in Messina. Locals were horrified to find that most of the sailors on board were dead, and the ones who weren't were deathly ill. Covered in black boils, oozing pus and blood, it was a grisly sight to behold. The townsfolk sent them back to see ASAP, but by then it was too late. The bubonic plague was there to stay. Eventually, it killed over 20 million people in Europe, knocking almost one-third of the population out. The ship bringing the disease to Messina was a portent of doom. However, most folks didn't figure this out until way later. The plague spread quickly on trade vessels, moving from major port to major port. To folks at the time, it seemed like it was randomly springing up in different locations, but the effects appearing in major trade centers seems kind of obvious to us now. Lacking the medical knowledge that we now have, people had to guess as to how the Black Death got from person to person. The symptoms were downright nasty. Italian poet Giovanni Boccaccio described it as certain swellings, either in the groin or under the armpits, waxed to the bigness of a common apple, others the size of eggs, some more, some less, these vulgar named plague boils. So you've got lumps the size of popular produce growing in your pits and crotch, leaking blood and pus. These disturbing growths were accompanied by fever, chills, vomiting, diarrhea, aches, pains, and of course, death. It attacked the lymphatic system, causing swelling in the lymph nodes. If left untreated, which it usually was in the 14th century, it would spread to the blood and lungs. For those unfamiliar with human anatomy, blood and lungs are super important to being alive. And of course, it was extremely contagious. This allowed it to spread very quickly and infect a ridiculous amount of people. Any sort of touch could spread it, and it even spread through the air. One of the scariest things about it was how efficient it was at killing. Healthy people who had contracted it could go to bed feeling fine and be dead by morning. There were no real treatments or preventative measures put in place. In fact, some people even thought it was a spirit of the sick infecting more people once it left its previous body. It's a creative response to what's happening, that's for sure. In the meantime, doctors were trying out techniques like bloodletting and boil lancing. Unfortunately, these were dangerous and often led to worse infections and the spread of pestilence. Others thought that bathing in rose water or vinegar would help, and while this might have helped a little with the stench, it did nothing to the disease itself. When it became quite clear that no cure would be found anytime soon, people fled the cities. Doctors wouldn't see patients, priests wouldn't come around, shops closed, and folks boarded up their homes. But those who managed to make it to the countryside found no relief. The plague managed to affect animals as well, and at one point reduced the sheep population so much that there was a wool shortage. It seemed that no matter where you went and what you did, the plague would find you. This led some people to believe that it was a divine punishment of sorts. God was displeased with the heretics and sinners, and therefore was exacting punitive measures on the world at large. To appease their angry deity, mobs would go around mass murdering heretics and lawbreakers. This, surprisingly enough, did nothing to prevent the spread of the plague. Who knew? Nowadays, we know the plague was caused by Yersinia pestis, a bacillus traveling from person to person through the air. Another common method of transmission was through the bites of rats and fleas, who were very common pests in medieval Europe. There tended to be a lot of filth, and these beings thrived. They were especially common on ships, which is the major cause of the quick spread. Trading vessels full of surly sailors would travel from densely populated zone to densely populated zone, infecting port cities wherever they landed. So for a long time, people were dying of nasty boils and blood infections. Eventually, it did run its course, and by the 1350s, the plague was much less widespread. However, it did reappear every few generations for centuries. Thankfully, it never caused as much trouble as the original outbreak. Nowadays, modern sanitation and public health practices have rendered it much less effective, but that doesn't mean it's been eliminated 
eliminated. While antibiotics for treating the plague do exist, we see a few thousand cases per year. Well, now that we're up to date with the history of the bubonic plague, let's start to consider what might happen if it came back in 2020. I've already mentioned that it never truly left, with thousands of cases being reported per year, but let's imagine for a moment that it started to spread similarly to that one time in October of 1347. What if a ship full of dead and dying plague bearers landed in, let's say, modern London? Would we be better equipped to deal with it? History says yes. With a cleaner and more educated world, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. People on board could be quarantined and treated, and folks wouldn't be allowed to get too close to the source. Knowing that it spreads in the air and that it loves to transfer quickly, healthcare professionals would shut it down pretty quick. We know all about the disease and have studied it and the cascading effects from it for thousands of years. Should be simple, right? Well, maybe not as easy as we think. See, the way our world works now is way different than in medieval Europe. Everything is much more connected than it's ever been before. Pre-pandemic, people were traveling more, goods were being shipped to more locations more often, and in general, folks were in contact with out-of-towners more. Planes, trains, and automobiles brought individuals and objects to places faster. This would fast-track the spread of the plague if people didn't catch on quickly. Let's say it just appeared one day and folks didn't realize. It could be spread around the world in a matter of days. And you know how efficient it was at transferring to and killing people. We could have mass deaths in an instant. There are less rats and fleas in developed areas, so it's not too likely that it would hit them too hard, but in less developed nations, the plague would be, well, the plague. With less easy access to clean water and medicine, folks living in areas of more wild animals and pests could quickly become plague bearers themselves. Without quick intervention, it could become disastrous in no time. And seeing how long it took for people to react to the current pandemic, it might be a too little too late scenario. Who knows? Add in the close quarters conditions at workplaces that make goods available worldwide, and this could spread further than you would think. Even with cleaner cities and more medical knowledge, companies like Amazon or Alibaba could potentially cause more plague to spread. Factories and warehouses full of folks and products heading all over the map could be breeding grounds for bacteria and carriers that are then shipped to locations around the world. And it's not likely that these operations would pause in the face of this, as we can see by looking at what's happening right now. If it were to spread far and fast enough, it could overload our capacity to deal with it, kind of like what happened with COVID. Supplies be bought out and rationed, and people would be left wondering how to protect themselves. Staying home and washing hands would help in some regard, but the tenacity of the plague would cause a lot of quick deaths. No two-week incubation period here. Sure, antibiotics could be distributed, but there's definitely no way that there are enough stockpiled to treat millions when only a few thousand cases are expected each year. So if the Black Death did come back for a 2020 reunion, we'd be in rough shape. I suppose if it showed up right now, most people would already be sheltered in place because of COVID, which would stem the spread of plague. But if you look at the amount of folks who still have to go to work, or or have decided to take the street in protest, it would have an impact for sure. So what do you think? Could the bubonic plague ever have an impact like it did in the 14th century? Or would it get taken care of right away? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more monstrous ones from what if everything from The Simpsons came true. Here's Chica asks, what if I was a real chicken? Somebody would probably eat you. Sorry. Macalia Fernandez says, dang, this video predicted I was gonna have a donut. Sounds delicious. Pink frosted sprinkled? Ball Control says, do what if Toy Story was real? Please do that. Even if Toy Story were real, we would never know it. The toys are too good at hiding their presence from people. Re-Kid says, hi. Oh, hey Re-Kid, how's life been? Listen to good music lately? Shayna Arlano says, I feel like I'm watching late for some reason. Nope, you're right on time. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I spin to win, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more infectious information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.